Welcome. This video is going to take a look at Avogadro's principle and how this fits in with the gas laws. So Avogadro figured out that because of the kinetic molecular theory and this idea that particles are always moving and gas is going to take up as much space as you can have, he figured out that even though gas particles can be big or little, heavier or light, it really doesn't matter what the particle size is because they're so far apart. So compared to the size of the gas particle, the space in between is just ginormous. So it really doesn't matter if you have two little tiny particles separated by this, you know, football field length of space between them, or if you have two slightly bigger particles. So it means a thousand krypton atoms, which are fairly big for a gas, will occupy the same space as a thousand helium atoms, which are pretty tiny little atoms. So Avogadro's principle says if you have equal volumes of gas, they will contain an equal number of particles, even if they're different gases. So it means that all gases at the same temperature and pressure have the same volume or the same number of particles in there. And so we call this molar volume or the volume for one mole of gas. And molar volume for gases is often given under what we call standard conditions or STP, standard temperature and pressure. And that's zero degrees Celsius, which is actually a little bit chilly. That's not quite room temperature. And one atmosphere, which is pretty typical. Our atmospheric, uh, atmospheric pressure is usually right around one. So molar volume under those conditions is 22.4 liters. A mole of any gas at all, carbon dioxide, helium, hydrogen, radon, big, little, doesn't matter. If it's at zero degrees, one atmosphere, and you have one mole of that gas, it's going to take up 22.4 liters of space. So how do we use this? Well, if I told you you have 75 liters of oxygen gas at STP, how many moles of oxygen gas do you have? I've really given you two conversion factors here because one mole of any gas equals 22.4 liters. So if I go back to what we know here, write down what you have, and I'll set up a ratio of what I want. I want moles, and I know about liters. I know that one mole of any gas under standard conditions should be 22.4 liters. So 75 liters is going to be more than one mole of gas. It could be a little more than three from the looks of it. So I go ahead and divide, and I get 3.5. 3.5 moles. And did it matter that it's oxygen gas? No, 75 liters of any gas at STP should be 3.35 moles of that gas. So here's a couple examples for you to try. Go ahead and pause in between these and see if you can come up with them on your own. You have 0.05 moles of hydrogen gas. How many liters of gas do you have? And I Miss kind of a key point up here, it should say at STP, because if we don't tell you it's at STP, we can't just use that conversion factor. So if you have 0.05 moles of hydrogen gas at STP, how many liters do you have? Well, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to write down what I have, 0.05 moles. I'm going to set up my ratio of what I want. I want liters. I have moles. And because it's at STP, it should be 22.4 liters per mole. And since I only have 0 0.05 moles, I may have quite a bit less than 22.4 liters. In fact, I only have 1.12 liters. If I have a 100 liter container of gas at STP, how many moles of gas does it hold? Here I didn't even tell you what the gas is because it doesn't matter. 100 liters. I want moles. I know about liters, it's at STP, so that means there's 22.4 liters in one mole. So I need to go this way. So 100 liters, or 100, yeah, 100 liters divided by 22.4 is going to be a little more than 4, or 4.464. I could hang on to uh, actually 4.46 because I have three sig figs there. 4.46 moles.